Welcome to Landmark Theater's Q&A podcast. In this podcast, we sit down with director J.A. Bayona and actors Sigourney Weaver and Louis McDougall from the film A Monster Calls. to get you, Connor O'Malley. Finding um, material that deal with fantasy with this level of emotion, it reminds me a lot, a lot of movies that I saw when I was a kid or, or books that I read, like uh, Never Ending Story or E.T. And it's so rare to find this material nowadays uh, that I, I wanted to be involved with one of those films. I think it's also the fact that it takes childhood so seriously and, all the, and the complexities of the psychology of a kid that I thought it was very interesting. It, it was p quite a, quite a, quite, it's quite rare to find these movies nowadays and, I, and, and I, it was a privilege to bring one of these films to the screen. It was a bit forbidding, I have to say. It's um, hard to play a, a grandmother who is not loved. That's one's first impression. She seems very strict and not very empathetic to what her grandson is going through. And it's really in the course of the story that you find out who this woman is and all her armor comes off. And I love the journey of that character. Um, I think that illness and loss does break people down and kind of build them back up together. So I, I love that I was being given the opportunity to tell that story. When I was first asked to do the audition, I actually didn't, I didn't have access to the script, so I, I went out and got the book because I hadn't read it before. I really just loved how, you know, at first he, he really isn't scared of the monster at all. You know, he has that, that defiance and, and, that, and that, you know, bravery and strength about him. That's something that I really, really liked. Well, I read the book, and in the book, if anything, you really see that the the grandmother's meant to be sort of the wicked queen of the of the structure. And I think that's one of the reasons Bayona wanted me was that he she he wanted an imposing, physically imposing person who kind of towers over uh, Lewis's character. So I had to be brave enough to start at that rather uncomfortable place of the grandmother that nobody likes and kind of go for it. You know, I have scenes where I, you know, here his mother is dying and I'm saying, you know, pick up your clothes and, you know, you can have spinach, that's all. And I kind of reveled in it um, because by the end, you see her as she really is. And it's, I think it's a very moving relationship. It, very rarely do you get to play a character with that much of an arc, especially as a supporting character. The movie is so unique, has so many different pieces. You have 
um, a, a drama in the center with a kid and with a boy and his mother. But then you had animations. We have a monster that had to be re uh, recreated with visual effects, spectacular visual effects. So finding the right tone where you were uh, passing from a very intimate scene with the boy and the kid, and the next scene was an, a big epic animation with fairy tale characters was pretty challenging. Finding that architecture with with the with the right tone. And what they did do is they made a monster's face. You know, they had a realistic, you know, full full size replica of the monster's face and hands and 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 even feet. So having that there in front of me was really, you know, really helpful because obviously if you're with a, if you're with a real person, you can just, you know, you can react to each other. But I didn't have that. But the fact that they made this monster was really helpful. It allowed me to, you know, imagine and, and visualize what the monster was going to be like. There's a moment in the film that you can see King Kong, the old King Kong, and the visual effects we did were not that far from what they did because we had a life right, a, a real life size replica of the head. We have the arms and and one foot. Uh, and the only change is that where they had motion cap, where they had uh, stop motion, we had motion capture. Uh, and motion capture uh, brings you the possibility of keeping the performance of an actor. We had Liam Neeson, and it was very um, overwhelming to see how we were able to bring all the sensibility and, and the pace, the performance from Liam Neeson into the character. And also was a big um, challenge to find the chemistry between the kid and the monster, because the monster was not really in the set. Uh, and that's why we did all the motion capture always uh, with Liam in front of Luis. And for Luis, we did that at the beginning with a great re rehearsal to do all the scene with the monster several times before we get to the set. I feel so lucky to have the opportunity to work with you know such a great director like him. I mean, you know, something that you would do actually, which I found really helpful with the use of music. He would often use music on the set. You know help me get into the, that the zone. You know, the music would vary depending on what type of scene it was, but that was something that he did, you know, along with many other things that I found really helpful. You know, Bayonne is really extraordinary. For such a young man to be such a master, he has such a strong instinct about story and casting and people and the tone he sets. Um, it's rare to see that kind of confidence in someone uh, so young. Uh, and I think he's a very, He's a very straight and sincere filmmaker too. Liam wasn't actually on set for the shooting of the film, but I did have the opportunity to do 10 days of like um, motion capture with him before we started shooting. So that was you know, very helpful for both me and him. You know, it gave me an opportunity to rehearse and then take that onto set. And in terms of working with people like you know Sigourney and Felicity and everybody, you know, I think a lot of what I learned I probably wasn't even conscious of. I mean, I think I learned so much just from you know being around them and getting to you know experience their work firsthand. You know, we were lucky because um, we had time in Manchester before we started to rehearse together. So Felicity and Lewis and I would, you know, improvise meals and visits and some of the uh, other material we had from Patrick Ness, the writer. And even though not all of it ended up in the movie, it was very useful for the dynamic. and. I think it was what was fun is that Lewis and like I remember trying to make him drink milk, and Lewis kept saying, "I don't drink milk. I eat broccoli." And anyway, whatever happens in those scenes, you know, just improvising becomes part of your history as the characters. As people, Lewis and I had a lot of fun. Uh, we tried not to have too much fun on the set, but um, he's such a lovely young man and worked so hard and was so delightful um, uh, and it was so moving actually to see him take this on um, that it, we, we didn't really have to work at anything besides, it, it all was bubbling away. It's funny because the whole film goes, it so, talks about how we need to find the truth and express the truth and, and that's exactly the same process that a filmmaker goes uh, through when he does a film. I mean, you need to find the truth and especially in this film with so many different pieces, uh, at the end you find yourself in the set with uh, uh, a couple of actors, a group of actors in front of camera and you need to find the truth, you need to express the truth in the most effective way. So it's a question of nurture them, feeding them, create the environment. Uh, I normally play a lot of music in the set and that's very helpful, not just for the actors, but for the whole crew, 
because everyone is very focused in the scene, in the tone of the scene. We don't need to talk much about the performance once we play music in the set. And, and it's a question of just uh, dedicate the time that they deserve, the, all the actors that they deserve, to be able to, uh, to bring the best of themselves to the story. Okay, are you ready? There we go. What color is that? <laughs> Maybe if we take a pencil and then we make a face and then we see the life in the eyes. Life is always in the eyes. <gasps> There's our monster. How does the story begin? With a boy. Too old. To be a kid. You're coming to live with me. Don't touch anything. Too young. To be a man. I no longer see you. <laughs> what did he do? You have to face this, but you have to be brave. Do you understand? What shall I destroy next? Break the windows! Break them yourself. It's okay that you're angry. I'm angry too. And if you need to break things, by God, you break them. years I could give to you. I'm afraid. Of course you are afraid. But you will make it through. For this is why you called me. Come on. You have been watching the Landmark Theatre's Q&A podcast. For further in-depth discussions with filmmakers, be sure to check out the other Q&As available on our channel from past films. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all our bonus content. Thanks for watching.